Uh, my name's Nate, I'm with uh, the Humanitarian Open Street Map team, and we all know seven years ago there was a, uh, a large earthquake in Haiti where open imagery really helped drive tracing uh, and all the tracing work that happened in that area in OpenStreetMap. So we had things like Digital Globe providing some pre-disaster imagery. We had World Bank, the Ro Rochester Institute of Technology flying uh, a small aircraft doing LIDAR and RGB and allowed people, allowed thousands of volunteers to assemble, uh, assemble the map immediately after the earthquake. But I was having a conversation last night with Skyler, who I hope is here, um, who, where he was helping do a lot of this, passing TMSs, WMTS, generating these services. And uh, the thing is like, difficult to get imagery service, services online and available. And so seven years ago, we started ma uh, Skyler and a number of other people started imagining a world. Uh, so if we combine the right license with tools to search and access, we can start having better, faster use of imagery in OpenStreetMap. And so what that world starts to look like is I can go to a place, any part of the world, find some imagery, see it, preview it, uh, and then pull it right into OpenStreetMap where, let's say, there were clouds before. Now I have imagery. I can start tracing it and start to put a community on the map. This is a open aerial map, so it's a distributed commons of of sharing open uh, aerial imagery, both satellite imagery and uh, drone imagery. And so I'm gonna give you kind of a sneak peek of the latest stuff we just rolled out yesterday and, uh, and how people are using it, where, where are people editing, uh, or not editing, adding, uploading imagery, and uh, kind of some of the things we're thinking about for the future. So if you go to Open Air Map, you can See, a, it's an application, visualize the map of the world, start to filter it down. I, mean, I just want to see high re resolution imagery. I can go to a place like Dominica, uh, who where recently Hurricane Maria passed through, and a number of UAV operators have been flying, capturing post disaster imagery. I can click on an area and immediately pull up and start visualizing a small you know, uh, flight that uh, Global Medic did, and pull that right into OpenStreetMap. Start editing start using it, uh, and start um, putting that community on the map. Uh, there, we can also just grab it and like, either download it, pull it into QGIS, do anything you want with it. But so, um, and then beyond satellite, uh, a lot of other UAV pilots have been publishing. So places in San Francisco, uh, from Berlin to Moscow to uh, Indonesia, where the Indonesian Red Cross is uh, collecting imagery for their programs, to uh, places in Fiji. So literally around the world, uh, imagery is being collected, made available, and we're starting to make it uh, easily accessible into OpenStreetMap. So over 35 countries, 100 different providers, and that could be anyone from a hobbyist to a commercial drone company, uh, provided almost 5,000 images uh, have been contributed. So I'm, I'm with HOT, we, you know, we, we, we still are, we, we're doing, we're leading disaster mapping through task.openstreetmap.org, but we're also building and training uh, to help grow OS, uh, OSM communities. And this is one of the reasons why we're behind uh, and really building uh, Open Aero Map with a number of other partners, uh, which you guys are in the room. So one of the big things is we're, we're trying to build a community of both UAV operators and imagery, oh, there's a typo, imagery providers, um, really to enable, uh, enable more impact through access. And what that looks like is uh, imagery in Vanuatu after the earthquake where you know, we're doing both OpenStreetMap tracing, but then also using that imagery outside of OpenStreetMap to do some damage assessments um, and uh, generate uh, reports um, uh, for uh, first responders, but also like post-disaster recovery. Uh, we're also doing, uh, helping supply some crowdsourcing damage assessments, you know, we're using a, a, a customized um, ID editor, talked to Robert Soden and um, some of the guys um, uh, where they're testing out some new methods for crowdsourcing. Uh, we're helping supply uh, imagery for some machine learning for malaria elimination. So 
OpenStreetMap plus some imagery are starting to take uh, classify types of buildings, whether residential or non-residential, um, to be able to do uh, better planning for mal malaria campaigns. Um, there's a number of image, uh, imagery uh, for pl flood planning in Dar es Salaam, uh, being able to create drainage maps and identify areas where, you know, in one of the most fastest growing cities, uh, where uh, potential flooding uh, could affect more vulnerable communities. Uh, we're, we're doing, uh, uh, there's a number of coordination happening across the Pacific in a pro uh, project called PACTID, uh, where an imagery coordination service is helping uh, coordinate where people are requesting imagery and uh, where uh, UAV pilots are flying. Uh, and so the, the really the future has, is, you know, has more open imagery for OSM, and uh, this is what we're working on uh, at Open Area Map. And, um, so we all know there's things like uh, all the different layers and the, all the awesome work um, that a number of companies here have, have allowed their global base maps to be a part of that, that ecosystem of options. And, um, and so we're working towards that to provide some more map services, like this is a s small demo of what it would look like when you, not lo looking at UAV imagery uh, scene by scene, but you're starting to piece together a a, a, a living map where uh, imagery that's being uploaded into a single layer is now accessible. We can bring that into OpenStreetMap. Um, we, we're working with Digital Globe to make their open data more accessible, uh, faster in, uh, in the wake of a, um, a disaster. So, yeah, and this is a case example where, you know, in uh, aftermath of Hurricane Matthew, uh, their uh, imagery was then immediately pulled in open, street map, open aerial map and then used into open, aer uh, open street map. And then, uh, so the big thing in the last day is we've been rolled out user accounts. So now you can sign in and quickly uh, upload and you can see your imagery. I don't have any images, but I'm going to upload one and uh, uh, be able to uh, quickly start to manage my own data, which is, this is a big thing for Open Area Map, where we haven't had that uh, op uh, opportunity for you to really manage your own data. So this is exciting, um, and uh, then what's next is more uh, kind of helping expose who's providing, so um, pr provider pages, but on top of that, being able to select a couple images and then generate a a, a small TMS from that, um, which kind of starts to give the power of where multiple uh, providers, multiple sets of data are coming together, uh, and then you can start to use it. Then we're working with uh, integrating with key, oh man, um, key provider, uh, key like software, so Open Drone Map, uh, which uh, Dakota will talk about here about in a little bit, uh, Drone Deploy, Agisoft Pix4D, allowing uh, if you are a drone pilot and uh, are, are collecting and processing and making imagery, uh, then you're easily, you can easily get it out and distribute it. Uh, and then lastly, we're, um, yeah, you know, through Open Air Map, we're, we're working on a number of training and other resources for doing better imagery collection. Um, you know, if you're interested, we're working on a uh, technical guidelines uh, for mapping with small UAVs. Come talk to me afterwards. We'd love, I'd love your input on this document and um, we we'll want to integrate this and make this readily available. Uh, more resources uh, and, um, and check out our, our blog and then openaerialmap.org. There's a font rendering error, sorry. So yeah, that's it. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Fixed. And I'll, I'll be able, uh, uh, we can uh, do questions later or now? No, no. Oh, no. Great. Any questions? Yeah, Chad. One sec. Mike's coming. What's the capability of Open Aerial Map to help with the processing of imagery once you collect it from a drone to get it rectified and um, services created? So, Open Aerial Map is really picking up after that processing happens. Uh, I think you know Dakota might share a little bit on the, the work that he's been doing on um, on the processing side of things. 
one thing uh, we are like o OAM is doing is is doing some compression on the and uh, for storage, and so that makes it easier to kind of port around a GeoTIFF um, if if that's what's useful. Um, so, uh, but I would love to think about um, the. Uh, I think a big challenge, especially working in where we've worked in the Pacific Islands, is after that processing happens, um, it's still a large file, and so a little bit of prep and uh, compression before you start to distribute it, I think would, would go a long way. You had a question. First, first of all, uh, thanks for fixing the blue image. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, and then uh, what, when are the plans for making a global mosaic, and what are the plans for algorithm for stitching the mosaic overlapping mosaic? Is mosaics? Seth here? <laughs> so um, the uh, so the plans are uh, we're working on that in the next month, and um, we you, you see some of the where is it. A little bit of just the, you know, we're we're getting started on this, um, and we're we're going to be working on that. So, uh, within the next month. Either one, you were first. So can I? Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, so, uh, this is uh, imagery from the drones, but uh, when we process it, process the imagery, we can also get digital elevation model, right? So what, uh, what Air Open Aerial Map will do with uh, this data? Can we share the digital elevation models as well? Because they are rasters as well, right? Right, right. Yeah, that's a good question. I've gotten that a lot. Um, and right now, we've really only been solving the kind of the true color uh, visual image uh, distribution. Um, I do think it wouldn't be out of the scope uh, to tie that with a uh, digital elevation model, so you have these kind of pairing files. Uh, we're not addressing that at the moment, but it, it's it's a topic that we've talked about. <laughs> um, so you mentioned that there's some smaller Pacific Islands that have requested the aerial um, coverage of them. For those islands, they're obviously very difficult to get to. Um, right. Are, do you find like local people that have UAVs do most of the mapping, or does it get contracted out to a company that comes in and does it? It's a it's a mix, um, actually. So, um, one, so there's I actually like, just two weeks ago I was in, in Tonga, and um, uh, the National Disaster Management Agency there uh, has two UAVs. Um, to G DJIs, uh, the Phantom Force, and so they've been learning, training uh, to be able to use uh, uh, use it uh, for uh, by themselves. But then they've also they've also contracted and brought in uh, external resources to to do some flights. So there's a mix. Yeah. Um, what kind of imagery kind of belongs there? Is it just drone imagery, or if I process Sentinel imagery into a true color image, is is that something that would be useful or we should be uploading, or is there size limits to what goes up there? Yeah, no, no size limits. Um, I, 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 the question of usefulness, I think, is, is there. Um, but right now, um, so Astro Digital actually has made uh, a bunch of their historical Landsat, pro process Landsat, it's all in there um, and available. So um, uploading Sentinel, uh, you know, Products isn't out of out of the scope. Other question. Uh, yeah, just two quick questions. So, is there any kind of geo referencing accuracy requirements or reporting standards that you would expect and? Uh, how about like support for historical imagery if people wanted to map historical features? Yeah, if, um, no limit on the historical stuff. Um, on the the, the georeferencing side of things, the, the only check that we're doing right now is that if the image actually is georeferenced, but it doesn't check 
what that quality is. So there is a, a, um, a range of quality of images that I've seen that come in. So uh, that, like, it is a, uh, a, a problem that it, I think if, if anyone here wants to tackle, I would love to tackle that with you, whether it's thinking about um, GCPs, thinking about uh, feedback, uh, we, if you know an image is offset at a certain, um, uh, to a certain point and giving feedback to, to that imagery provider. Um, yeah, I, that's not there, but it's not out of the scope of like where, where OAM is. I think what we've been focused on the last year is starting to build this foundation and build this community around some of these, these problems and, um, and, and then start to build from there. Uh, so I'm, I'm around till uh, all day tomorrow, and so if anyone wants to talk about this more, see a demo, upload imagery that you already have, uh, please come talk to me. Thank you.